Alright everybody, welcome to our first game. We are in game number one here at the HCL and uh, looking to the left side, the blue team it is. Whiskey, Coca, or should I say Team Hammer because Nasty picked up the hammer once again. We have Whiskey himself on the stitches, blowed on the Terriel. Ravi is playing Uther and Exploding is playing the Falstad. On the second play day we have to the right side Team Paper. Leo from Korea plays the Rega, ADRD plays the Tacita, Saiku is playing Arthur's Soldier of the Carrigan two, and Nika the Tikers. We had a patch one since the last play day and one. the one big change has been that we have Jaina introduced to the hero pool. So far she wasn't picked yet and another change is also that today at least Tyranda is banned for a very simple reason. There's a problem with one of her talents that reduces the cooldown on the, the owl impact and apparently the bug causes the new ch or the new version to take effect as well as the old one making it kind of crazy and allowing a perm spam on the owl which is of course too imbalanced so the admin said okay today we won't be, no, no team will be able to pick Tyranda. I guess we're going to see a hot fix for that uh, fairly soon by Blizzard. For now, we don't have that. Down to the bottom lane, this is three versus one. We have up to the top lane also on an Arthur's and Carrigan are nasty as it is. But there we go, Arthur's Carrigan jumping in. The entire team is on the move. Oh, nice! There comes the jump and blow gets dropped here. Really well done. I love how Xoltro just waited with his stun combo. We had Psycho initiate with his own Arthur's with a Howling Blast, and then the most damage done in Carrigan waiting the entire time for him to jump to his sword and once that happened we saw Kerrigan just drop the primal grasp and also the impaling spikes and did a really great job with that so very well done it's the first blood here for the team down to the bottom lane we have the hammer in the game again it's nasty on his tank the last week it didn't work out for them and last week it was actually like really interesting to see both teams go for a hammer of course not in a match against each other here in the HCL we have a best of one system and as you can see right now it's just hammer time at the bottom on a dragon shy, which is a great map actually if you want to like siege up one of these positions. Alright, Soldro in a bit of trouble there. Here comes Nasty starting to attack immediately and sieging up that shrine. That shrine is something that the uh, opponent's team won't be able to take all that fast. To the top we have Psychic versus Bloat. Oh, but we have Falstead flying in. That's bad news for the Arthurs. Goodbye, Frostmon. He is already gone. And in the mid lane we have now that battle. Actually, not really a battle. We have three players waiting for someone to appear so that they can take him out. Carrigan here in the mix. I actually love to see her. I love the hero. It's great to we see Carrigan in the game. The and she's absolutely amazing when it comes down to hunt uh, individual heroes, especially in uh, combination with another stun hero, like, for example, the Arthurs that has the lockdown. Down to the bottom now. The first tower goes down. And actually, this is getting like it's extremely interesting since the patch changed something. Towers give experience now. So this is like called a town hall, this entire area, and before only the fort would give you experience. But right now Blizzard changed it and said like, okay, that doesn't really make too much sense. We may we divide that. The fort still gives the most experience, but the two towers also give experience, and that of course works in favor of the hammer here. And the hammer is moving back already. Stun comp of Soldo is not hitting. That hook against him, on the other hand, is already pushing the carry and back. And whoa, that was actually a close one. Carrigan had a bit of trouble there, or was very, very close of having an issue and dying. Up to the mid lane, we have Exploding going up against Leo from Korea. The Rega is so far doing quite well to the top lane. It's once again Tyriel versus Arthas, and Arthas already moving back. The bottom lane still sieged up, and losing those towers is a much, much bigger deal than it was in the old version. This patch really affected gameplay a lot, and the tank is one of the heroes that benefits the most from the towers suddenly granting experience. These push comps with a tank can do a lot. Promote, on the other hand, got a bit nerfed. The bans in this game were we Chen and Zerich Wu. We did not see the Abathur ban because, first of all, his heroic ability is a bit weaker, and then second, Promote also got hit pretty hard by the ban hammer, or by the nerf hammer, and that affected, of course, Abathur as well as, let's say, Asmodee. Here we come again with a nice grab by Exoldrum, but oh, he did not want to get them this close. There goes the Carrigan, already dead. That's two kills versus one so far. Great job by Whiskey Coca. The team is doing very well here, and we are having a look at the talents now. Especially, uh, of course, interesting for us is the Hammer build with the advanced artillery on level one, with on level four, first aid and Maelstrom shells on level two. We have a full slam build, nearly full slam, with Tenderizer here for the stitches that he 
they could use. The false set trying to move away here. Doesn't really get that wish. Psycho is completely pushed out. He's blocked as well. The hammer comes in and if you get one of those artillery rounds straight into the face then uh, you know that you're not, you don't want to live anymore either. Suddenly the Dragonite moves in too. And by the way, you cannot apply anything to the Dragonite anymore. So Abathar can't jump into the Dragonite, you can't heal the Dragonite any longer. So Blizzard was just basically saying, yeah, that was too strong, especially in the late game, that Dragonite just did way too much when it got healed and everything, so we need to take that out. The tank is still at the bottom lane, trying to put some pressure onto that fort, while the dragon is up in the mid lane. The rotationer from Team Paper was there immediately, they're trying to just like burst that down as fast as they can. But a 5 minute Dragonite is, as you can see, still doing quite some work, and he is doing exactly that. Yeah, that pump attempt didn't really go all that well for him, but still. Level 9, nearly level 10 now, with two additional towers killed. That's four towers in total now. With a new experience change, that gives them level 10. And there is the Gorge. Gets the hook, gets the Gorge. Really well done. And the stun against Nika as he goes down. So another kill for Whiskey Coca. They're doing this really well right now. Nasty already in a nasty position. Sieging up and applying his Null Palm to the fort. And you can really feel how Team Paper is suddenly extremely pressured by Whiskey Coca here. Whiskey is moving in with his team, looking for another hook here. Maybe an attempt. Take one down. Bloat might still have the judgment up. Uh, Tyriel has also received a bit of a nerf to the damage that he deals with the judgment initiation. But of course the skill itself and the stun is still great. Still the best hard initiator in the game. So very, very well done there. Looking at the talents once again. We have on the hammer that Anna Pump Strike as already expected. We see Shock and Awe taken by Falstead. Falstead still with the same build that we had before the patch. Nothing changed too much for him. Except that the changes to Rewind are much better for him now. Double and Venom down here. We have also uh, at the same time uh, Rune Tap and of course Frozen uh, Tempest increased radius taken. Uh, if you uh, guys were wondering a bit about my voice, I'm indeed sick right now. I have a bit of a fever and also a bit of a headache so my apologies to uh, me probably sounding yeah, <laughs> a bit weird, but yeah, so far we're just like trying to get those games going and uh, give you the best coverage that we can here. So, I was talking a bit about the false set and the changes to the Rewind. Rewind does not, does completely reduce the cooldown right now, but the do, like the cooldown of Rewind itself has been increased. So the changes were definitely made and are quite interesting since suddenly it allows Falstad to go for his W twice when he is in overdrive mode, which he was not able to do before. Before that Rewind only reduced a few seconds, like 10 seconds flat from each of your talents from the cooldown. Right now it completely rogues the duration. Oh nice, the move against the others. Oh, ho, ho, the shock and all, oh, that hit. But also so does the Tigers here in Odin farm. Oh my god, line them up Baby, just line them up. That's what Nika is thinking right now. And he is hitting like a truck, but that shock and all oh, did work. Exploding, jumping in there with a really nice move. That was an awesome battle. Two kills versus three. Still in favor of Whiskey Coca, but holy cow, that was a dream come true for every hero with a bit of area of effect damage. I think Gavala with a uh, Reign of Vengeance would have gotten, a, she would have probably got a bit of an orgasm right there. I mean, I would have used that Reign of Vengeance immediately. Think about like an Abathur behind that with a copy of Vala and like quadruple Reign of Vengeance. Holy mother of god, that would have been awesome. As it is, it was still pretty cool with the false stat shock and all, and then of course also the Odin going ham. Now we have like two shrines under the control of Team Paper and Leo from Korea. Oh, the hook! Nice hook, and they're trying to go for him. But there comes the rest of the team, and the initiation against him by the Tyrion. Oh my god, the hammer taken out, and he lives! Leo actually lives, I cannot believe it, like four heroes go ham on him and he lives. Oh, what a nice storm. There's the Dragonite, Ravi gets taken out and Tyriel gets kicked like flat in the face as exploding just like goes over the edge with a quick bell roll. Really well done there. So right now, oh, another kick in the face, but yeah, three heroes down for them and Team Paper they are suddenly back to business. You can really see how they are getting back into the game and starting to also get a bit of an advantage there. That's Dragon alone. 400 experience on the first tower. They're definitely going to get the second one as well. Already rotating towards the bottom with the Arthurs. And they take the experience lead. 
At the beginning of the game, it was Whiskey Coca that gave them a run for their money, especially with the tank being in position at the bottom lane, but now it's the complete opposite. We have the last few fights, or the last fight, the big one, won by Team Paper, and the Polish team is starting to go for it, dropping tower after tower, and that adds up 800 additional experience down in the bottom lane. And now we have, with full force, Whiskey still there. Nah, he doesn't get a hook out of this. No, 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 that's not gonna happen. Especially with him not having the finishing hook talent just yet. There's just no way he can use that. Looking at the talents again, Slam Build. That's what's on the menu for Stitches. Stitches is hungry. And we have him also with Sprint on the Uther. Here comes the Rewind for the false stat. Overdrive is going to be used later. Carrigan still has the Rewind ability. A hero that lost Rewind in the last patch was the Anubarak. Anubarak got nerfed pretty hard. Blizzard apparently was a bit sick of Beatles and they squashed that bug pretty nastily. Taking down not only the Rewind, which makes it really impossible for him to initiate with his uh, Burrow Strike. And then just like go out again if uh, there's trouble brewing. So right now without Rewind he's a lot dif more difficult to play and he also got some nerfs to his heal and shield. Here comes the Shotgun. Oh maybe. No, not just yet. But the initial there comes the Shotgun. Oh, doesn't need too much. This time Exploding actually screwing that up a little bit. Whiskey is in trouble. Uther is already down and here comes Team Paper in full force. Running in, racing down the heroes. Exploding needs to battle roll away. Gets away to the safety of the fort. Here comes again Whiskey with an attempt to drop one hero. But Falson is already down and it looks like Arthas is going to follow him. He does. So it's a 3 for 1 now as Stitches dies as well. Whiskey didn't make it. And we have four heroes still up for Team Paper. They have the level 16 talent. And what are they going to do with it? There's now a camp down at the bottom. It's actually like a Bruiser camp. The night camp has been renamed into Bruiser camp. And we have, instead of a sea giant, uh, of an easy camp, now a hard camp down at the bottom of Dragon China. Probably the reason why it was renamed into Bruiser Camp and not Night Camp is because Blizzard will most likely plan on different maps to use different mercenaries for hard camps and not only knights. So renaming it from a Night Camp into Bruiser Camp makes sense if you want to cater towards that. With different themes or different maps, it makes a lot of sense. Just think about knights on a StarCraft themed map. Doesn't really work well, so you need to do something else about that. So that's maybe going to be a Marauder camp, like I don't know. So for now we have Nika moving in, AD already up at the top. They are all trying to just grab that tower. It's level 16 versus 16 and nearly 17. For uh, That was definitely a fishing hook that we saw there from Whiskey. So he uh, changes it up apparently from uh, the... Uh, build with slam and goes into at least the fishing hook. I don't want to confirm that, but I don't want to jump into the talent screen. Yes, full build with the, uh, yeah, full build with the uh, start, but, uh, sorry, with the slam, but not for that. Oh, the ulti burning down the Odin, exploding, not hitting as much as he wanted, but at least burning down the Odin with what is important. Ravi is trying to escape here, hitting the speed hard like he's rushing away with a sprint. We have Whiskey already down and there comes Carrigan once again. Nasty just can't escape there. Carrigan, such an amazing hero for hunting down prey. She's a predator, you can tell. She is a real life cougar. Leo is already moving back and we have the near team wipe now as only exploding is surviving and exploding with the attempt to take down Psycho. Doesn't get him. Wow, he can nearly get two. Oh wow, that was a close call. Like I really thought he couldn't uh, take out the Arthas, but then we had the shield from the Tassadar. Tassadar got changed quite a lot as well. Like he's less of a DPS hero and more of a support hero now. What Blizzard did for first of all, the most important thing is that his Archon form now doesn't last 15 seconds anymore, but only 12, which was a pretty big nerf in itself already, since Archon is the main damage dealer for him with those big fights. So the aura ability has been nerfed, and then there have been a few changes to his Storm as well doesn't do uh, the uh, more damage, more of the level 1 talent. So in total, he's more of a support hero than uh, he was before, less of a DPS hero. His Void Shift, for example, the length of the duration got increased, so it's easier for him to get away. Another Dragon now for Team Paper, they are on level 18 versus 16. And right now it actually looks a bit like we might continue that trend as tank compositions just don't win in the HCL. Four teams have tried, four teams have failed. Today it might be number five. There's the initiation against Carrigan. They're trying to take Soldro down. The heels are not strong enough. He dies, but so does the Stitches in the last second. Arthurs is not looking too healthy either, though. And with a kick away from uh, uh, Uther, that is actually really good for them without the healer in the battle. 
They can maybe isolate another hero, but Team Paper is moving back. It was a one-for-one -one trade in the last fight, and it doesn't really look like the Dragon Knight is going to do too much from here. Nope. 17 versus 18. That's what the current tele uh, the current levels are. And we see, of course, down that additional level for Team Paper, which will give them a faster 20 if they keep this up. Just take the map. That's the advantage that they have right now. Of course, that's something uh, that Whiskey Coca is very aware of as well. If you give them too much time right now and you don't force a fight now, you might fall behind with a 20 against you, and that's always very, very tricky. So it might be something that they are going to take care of, or at least going to try and take care of, by fighting very, very early right now. That's something that we might see. Um, besides that, what we currently have... Oops, Siege Giant can Yeah, I should take that. We have a rotation down to the bottom, where we have the camp going to respawn in 18 seconds. And it's a bit of a trap. Admiral Akbar is already there, and he's looking at this, and he analyzes the situation, and after a few seconds, he's like, It's a trap! And it indeed is. So, it is a trap, and they might run straight into that. Funny as it is, I played a game today where we run exactly into this trap, and we fell for it completely. So do they, and... Oh, that's... Oh my god, that Juggernaut hits three. Whiskey eats one. The stun by Uther is there as well. Falson is dead, though. Oh my god, like, they get wiped. What a great initiation by Whiskey Coca, but Team Paper, they just do not care. The heals are real in this team, and oh boy, did that hurt. Like, all those shields that we have from the Tassadar, well, the fort is being dropped. Let's take a quick look at the Tassadar build that we see from ADRD. Yes, the healing ward, that in alone already did a lot of work. The shields that we had for them as well. Now we have the Twilight Arcan for him. What do we have for the Rhaegar? There's the healing totem. It was just like all that stuff. The lightning shield with the, with the shield damage that it has there. The heals, the ancestral healing, the double healing ward. That kept them alive even after the force that hit like one of the most amazing uh, heroic abilities that I've seen in quite some time. Hitting three heroes and nearly dropping them. Whiskey moved in with a Gorge. I really thought that the Gorge damage alone would already take down the hero, but that wasn't the case. Now they're going to get another Dragonite there, and we're talking 16-minute Dragonite right now. So, great move by them. The Tassada has an awesome support, still with a lot of damage on the Storm. Basically, nearly the same build that you would have seen before. And Gregor adding that up by just him being himself with the heals. And this is 20 versus 19 right now. The rest of the Paper team is moving in. Paper apparently does not only beat Rock, but it might also beat Whiskey Coca. Because right now, what they need is an incredible miracle to come back. They could maybe get... Like, I don't know what they could do, to be honest. Like, maybe isolate a hero, get a good hook against the Carrigan, eat her, move her back towards the core, and then, like, take that out. One of those things might work. There was also a few hidden changes by Blizzard, uh, if you've read the patch notes. Uh, you know that the core has now more shields, and uh, the way that the shields are calculated has also been changed. First keep is down, and the... well... In the end, it's nearly twice the amount of shields that the core has right now, so it's much more difficult. Oh, well, that was a good one! Maybe that is an attempt to uh, get back into the game. If they can drop the Arthas right now, that would be a great start, but... Look at those stuns! Oh, they pushed her out of the false and ultimate! Exploding is mad like a sheep right now. He's mad! And for good reason, because that would have been an amazing ult. Like this, it only hit, I think, one hero. He could have hit, like, two or three, but the Teriel pushed them out. He died, which is only a small advantage, but, yeah. We have the rest of the team moving in. There comes the kill against Arthas, finally, but here is Resurgence up. Nasty is going... No! He's going to heal! He's not going down, but he certainly looked like it. And what else do we have? Nika moves back right now. 20 kills against 11. Still not the 20 for Whiskey Coca, but it looks like Whiskey... Nah. Even with a fishing hook, that hook is not long enough. Yeah, uh, it's just it's just too short. That's what she said. And we have also Carrigan, of course, um, with a quick move into the middle, trying to maybe find another victim. Yes, they are going for the night camp, trying to get those camps now on the map side of Whiskey Coca, and they are going to get those. They have one fort already down. They have the bottom pushing with like one. Uh, 
uh, one siege giant camp. Now they can push the top, but it looks like they just want to get additional. Well, what Whiskey Coca can basically do right now is only sit tight until they have the 20. And it looks like Team Paper is trying to exploit that by taking all of the mercenaries on the map, buying themselves a bit of time. And with that time, just wait for another Dragonite and try to win it with the next Dragonite and not really force anything just yet. So we have another 27 seconds before the shrines are active again. And in those 27 seconds, Whiskey Coca has to get level 20 or they will probably lose the game. If they get the 20 now by clearing one or two more waves, then they can move as 5 and maybe win one of those battles and turn things around here. But they kind of need to do that somehow. So they're trying to move in and, yep, there, they get the 20. Oh, there's the Arthurs, gets one hero, and we have that battle right away. Nasty moving back, is not gonna go in tank form here. We have, oh, that shock and oh, uh, Leo from Korea heals himself before the stun by Ravi. The Uther hits, Uther actually extremely low, and the Odin form might take him down. No, it doesn't, but it certainly drops the tank. The hammer is down, the hammer has been dropped, and so was the Tychus dropped. We have it back with Resurgence. Resurgence also with an update, now 180 seconds instead of only 120 seconds of cooldown on it. The top shrine has been taken. Carrigan stays around a little bit like Dumbfounder because he's like, hey, why the hell can I take the Dragonite? And then somebody's like, duh, bitch, please, look at the bottom, we don't have the Moon Shrine. And she's like, meh, I want. But yeah, didn't really get it yet, but there we go. Blow moves in, it erupts in the last second. They're down a hero though. They are fighting a four versus five right now. Never a good idea, but they are desperate here. Desperate with the D as Ravi moves back. Oh, that's done. But it's yeah, only prevents the inevitable. One down, two down. They are gonna kill maybe even a third, not quite, but they definitely get the Dragonite. There comes Soltro, moves in with the Carrigan, gets the DK, and now with two level advantage and another Dragonite, they can just move in. And they don't even bother with the keep. They're like, wait, keep what? Why? We can just like go straight for the core and end this. There we have the shields now already about to be taken out. Psycho is moving in and yeah, that looks pretty nasty. That Dragonite, look at those hits, wow, 5% off the core every single time that thing hits. Here comes another heroic ability by False, and he gets kicked away for that. And this is game, this is Team Paper winning it against Whiskey Coca in the HCL. Played it to the best of one here. Congratulations to Team Paper, and once again, the Hammer Comp did not prevail. Game on, ladies and gentlemen, as we have SK at the HCL going up against MYM. Meteor Makers is facing on the second play day Prepare on Cursed Hollow. SK Gaming, Heroes. and to the left side we have SK in blue with BKB on the Chen, Escape on the Stitches, BZ on the Vala, Linked on Uther, and Sefka on the Nova. Nova is still in the game, even though we had a patch and a nerf, hammer hit her hard. Aristina on the right side for Media Makers is playing the Rainer. In the meantime, we have Lewin on the Arthas, Bram on Rhaegar, Icy Blast on the Nubarak, and Diablo is playing Tychus. So right now we have two heroes where a lot of people said that we would not see them in competitive play anymore because they got just nerfed too hard. One of them is the Anubarak that we see here in the middle of the screen right now. Anubarak was changed by Blizzard in the regard that he lost Rewind and he also, like the shield that he has got weaker and the ultimate heals less. So he is a lot less tanky than he was before which a lot of people say is a good thing but at the same time losing the Rewind is a very, very big deal. Oh my god, the hook by this game, and he's getting away. Wow, he actually escapes. Oh my god, this is like the, I don't want to call it a noob trap, but it's basically what a lot of people do when they're up against newer players. It's one of those spots where you always try to position yourself with the stitches for that hook, and then just like block a hero in with two heroes. Really well done by this game. But yeah, the Anubara gets away. But we saw the problem right there. You saw that E, that's something that he could do basically twice in the, the last patch, where he just like E'd in for the initiation, then he hit the rewind, and then if, yeah, if shit hit the fan, he could just like move out again. He can't do that anymore. So Anubara is a lot more squishy. You have to play really careful with him. But he's still played here by Meteor Makers. They picked him in this particular battle against SK Gaming. This is the best of one, of course. 
something you should keep in mind. And another hero that got hit pretty hard we by the patch blessed, was Nova. Way. Not only did Nova lose Rewind, which a lot of people said was absolutely, I mean, she had that coming. Nova players annoyed like every hero player in the entire world. It was actually a disaster. Nice pick against the Tigers there. It was really crazy. I leveled my Nova during that time to level 5 to get the money and I have to say that even when I had a really bad game where I completely screwed up everything, I still ended up being the uh, hero with the highest DPS in the game just because she hit like a truck. Now she didn't only lose the rewind, which makes it impossible to hit her combo twice, but she also got a reduction on the hotshots talents, which is now called anti-armor shells. Instead of plus 330% damage, it does only plus 300% damage. And also so, another thing is that Snipe got slightly nerfed. He doesn't do as much damage anymore. I'm completely happy with Nova. I'm not quite sure if she really got hit too hard, like some people claim. But I like that she cannot insta-kill you any longer. So as long as she does a lot of damage, she's fine. She should do a lot of damage. And I think she can still do that. But it's something where you at least have a chance of reacting when she goes up against you. Now we have a camp already taken with the perfect timing here for Meteor Makers. Another thing that you should maybe also know, you haven't probably read up on that. The mercenaries spawn later now on the map, so you can't go for a super fast siege giant camp anymore. It's like at two minutes that we have the mercenaries spawn on every map, and that includes the ones on Blackheart Spain. Nice hook there against Icy Blast with the disruption. Allows the rest of the team to move in. Reyna versus Vala, BC versus Iristina, Sefka moving in, and linked on the Uther is trying to get the stun, but he already moves away. The curse is still there. Bran is trying to take it on the Rhaegar with a reindeer skin. We have Icy Blast in a bit of trouble as well. Good hook against Diablo. And Diablo goes down. Is already being dropped. Linked with another attempt to stun. No, he's too late already. Good job by SK. They get an entire level up on their opponent. And they also grab the tribute. Two kills against zero. Meteor Makers is in a bit of trouble there, especially since up at the top the Siege Shines are already pushing in that wall. And if you were in case you missed that earlier in our first game, one of the things that changed is that experience is now divided between the fort and the towers and not on the fort alone. So if you kill a tower, at least one of the outer towers, you get 400 experience. Once we move into a, a range of the keeps, it changes again. But for now, it's 400 on the outer ones at the fort. And uh, Sorry, yeah, at the fort. And that therefore gives you quite a lot of wiggle room. So, really well done. Um, down to the bottom lane, we have still the Chen going up against Bran on the Rhaegar. That skin is, by the way, super funny. I love the uh, attention to detail that Blizzard has there, going into these reindeer skins and all those things that they have for uh, Jaina, for also, of course, the Rhaegar here. So it's pretty funny to see that. It's pretty cool. Uh, it makes everything quite Christmassy. In the mid lane, we have Linked going up against Aristina on the, the, the Zebra. And already uh, an attempt up there to maybe jack that uh, night camp, trying to capture that. They're fighting for it. Here comes Link, goes in. Oh, and my Meteor Maker is not going to be happy about that. They are starting to lose loons there. The Arthurs goes down, and I see Blast gets dropped by BZ and moves in from the right side. Well done by him. Two heroes down, the night camp taken, down to the bottom lane. BKB versus Bran starting to take the tribute. Things are not going well for Meteor Makers here. SK is one of the strongest teams in Europe right now. BKB even telling the rest of his team, don't worry boys, I got this. I got this, bro. And you just take care of the big boss. And they're doing exactly that. Level 9 versus level 8. Level 8 is the second. And they take the goal. Looking at the talents here. We have BZ with Rancor, Manticore, and Searing Arrow. Full right click build for him, a full slam build for the escape on the stitches, including the toxic gas here. At the same time, we have the overkill build down here for Tyke is not going for the grenade on four. So pretty interesting. For Nova, same build that she had before, just a bit different with the anti-armor shells now being used. And here comes the precision strike as level 10 is being hit. And that brings us back to the action at the top lane. 10 versus 8. Arthur is starting to initiate. Bad idea, buddy. Not against a level 10 team when you uh, don't have your heroic abilities just yet. Stitches is moving in and there's the Gorge and the Precision Strike. Goodbye, Luin. No way for him to escape here. That's already done. And oh, <laughs> the double stun. Rain of Vengeance and the Uther going in as well. It drops two, drops three. Reyna goes down. Tigers is running. He's like in a really bad spot in his life right now. And that midlife crisis carries him straight into a death. 
three heroes, two heroes still down, a tribute coming up, and SK Gaming is just like going ham on Media Makers right now. I mean, oh boy. I love, by the way, that I'm playing with Sefka right now. My Sefka was for an extremely long time my favorite Vala player. He's been playing Vala for a lot. I was copying his builds in the first alpha wave. He's been playing that hero like a ton. was playing for different teams, Empire being one of them. And now we have Sefka, part of SK Gaming. At least he's subbing for them now. I don't think he's part of the official lineup just yet. But I would love for them to pick him up. He's a great player. He's a really good DPS player. I was actually a bit surprised to see Beezy jump on the Vala and Sefka on the Nova here. But apparently he, found he took a liking to her. Uh, Sefka himself, great player, and yeah, I think we will see great things from him here. Team is apparently doing well. They lost Zarmoni, he quit Heroes of the Storm completely and is focusing on his studies again. So the Curse doing a lot of damage as you can see. A 4 level advantage, that is extremely difficult now for Media Makers. They didn't get a single kill. But on the other hand, that means that if they get with maybe the level 10 that they reached now, it's Team Wipe, they would be able to close that, ga that distance in a second. It looks like they just want to go for an exchange. They go up to the top, the fort at the bottom has been taken, and up to the top they just go for the towers, they try to get the experience like that, heroic abilities, Raiders, Raiders, good build by Aristina with the Searing Arrow, I like it, I use the same build. We have Command Deer, Odin, Locust, Swarm, and Army of the Dead as well as Ancestral Healing taken besides that. They take the towers, that gives them half a level, and start to move back. They had, could actually have taken the 4-2, but they just saw that SK Gaming was not on the map anymore, so they just assumed that they would run up to the top and take them. And now they suddenly realize, uh, duh, they didn't do that. They actually just took the boss there, so, yeah, damn, that didn't really work out. Uh, SK is on a tear right now. I mean, let's be honest, it's bloody, it's brutal, and it is everything that we... Oh, ho, ho, ho! Wow! That hook! That hook by the escape, these prediction hooks, like every now and then you throw one and you hit him. It's the best feeling in the entire world. The escape is on cloud nine right now. He is super happy with that and of course Media Makers is not happy at all. Losing the initiator in this crucial phase of the game is brutal. They're so far behind already. If they could kill the core um, themselves, they would probably attack it right now. But they're just trying to just wait it out there. They can't do anything. That keep is gone, the 13 talents for the opponent, there comes another hook, and the jump in, oh my god, that precision strike just hit three heroes, even with them trying to move away, two already down, Arthur's is body blocked and killed, and this is, this might even be the end, nine minute game so far, yep, there's the block against Aristina, Bran is trying to run away too, but they're just like going for the core, with the golem already helping out. That might be a free I minute mean, game. Look at the Rhaegar dancing. They gave this up. This is going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the GG. Not even 10 minutes. SK rolls over Meteor Makers and wins their second game here at the HCL. Congratulations to SK Gaming. Amazing, amazing performance. Our third game for the day we have at the HCL AAA going up against Unfaculty, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a pretty cool game on our hands with AAA starting to the left okay, side with Sky High man. on the Arthurs, Darrow on the Brightwing, Gerdam Hurt TV on Vala, Von Thill on Falstad, and Siak, the new player, a StarCraft 2 player formerly, playing for most spots in StarCraft 2, is playing the, the Zeratul here. And Faculty, on the other hand, is starting to the right side of the best of one on Cursed Hollow with Green out on the Rhaegar. Five, Exxon on Stitches, four, Hole on the Raider, three, Cypher on two, the Abatha, one, and uh, Chen being played by five. Lotus. So, it's a really interesting game that we have there, and the reasons are actually quite simple. We had a patch just a few days ago, so a lot of the heroes have been changed, and therefore the meta changed, and also the picks and bans. A lot of people have been saying that we won't see Nova anymore, that we won't see Anubarak anymore. What happened in the last game? We saw Nova and Anubarak. They also said that Abathur is not going to be a good pick any longer. And what do we have in the game? We have Abathur. So let's talk a bit about the patch changes. Let's talk a bit about the picks, the bans, and what happened here. 
ban in this game was not the Abathur, as it was usually the case in the last uh, patch, but it was instead the Uther that got banned out and also the Tychus. Instead, we now have the Abathur taken uh, by Sypho for in faculty. And the interesting part about that, as Exxon is being attacked in the middle and being dropped as well, the first blood. Uh, we had yeah, the interesting part about seeing the Abathur here is Abathur got nerfed and he only received one nerf straight to his hero and that's a pretty significant one. In the old patch what happened when you would use ultimate evolution, the heroic ability, is that during the time that you were in the copy of another hero of your team, that cooldown was already active. So it was a very short cooldown, especially when you hit your 20, to use your ultimate. Right now it doesn't really work that way. The cooldown starts once you pop out of the clone and therefore the time frame between two times that you're between the intervals where you can pick a clone is significantly longer. Another big change was also that promote got changed. So the promotes only last 15 seconds, which basically means you cannot simply promote a minion in your own base like a catapult and then uh, it will push the entire lane. Nope, now you have to be very close. Let's say if you want to push this wall, you should be roughly over here with the Abathur, promote something there, and then the minions are starting to push in with the promote, and after 15 seconds it disappears. So it takes away off the pushing power of a lot of heroes, which makes certain push comps also a bit weaker, and uh, one of the heroes affected is, of course, the Abathur. Both teams are level 4, we had one single kill in the game, but we have triple assassin here for team AAA with a Vala, with a Falstad and a Zeratul. They're trying to play this super aggressive style. I think they've been doing uh, a lot of these things in the last few days. Last week as well, if I'm not mistaken, they lost that match that they played there. This time they have with Siak a player that might be, uh, might be able to uh, just like put in uh, the difference that they need to uh, succeed. But, well, we're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves. The curse is gonna spawn very, very soon. We currently have level 5 for both teams here. Um, also, if you're wondering about my voice, I'm still sick, like I have a fever and also a bit of a headache, but I didn't wanna uh, yeah, cancel the cast, so we're still here. Tribute is down there. We have already the healers with Darrow on the Brightwing and Lotus going up against him on the gem, as especially Vada is starting to rotate towards the ship. The rest of the heroes are doing the exact same thing. With up at the top, a missed howling blast by Sky High. Did not kill Green out. The wolf is running. Oh, straight into the fall stand. One thill with a really nice move there. Takes him out, but at the bottom lane, Stitches and Abatha are pushing Darrow back. He's trying to get close, and he gets the cancel on the Tribute. That allows probably the rest of the team to move in in time. Yes, nice move by one fill there. Also, one thing is that the channeling time on the Tribute was reduced from six, uh, from seven to six seconds. Oh 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 The Chen! That was a panda, uh, not a happy panda, that's a sad panda right now. Exxon is also down, so with Exxon down, the panda down, that's kill number three and number four for AAA. They're actually doing some work with that triple assassin comp right now. We have double tank comp for team and faculty, and it doesn't really work out for them just yet. Uh, so let's see how and what they can do once they get a bit more damaging. I mentioned it before and I want to mention it again. Towers give experience in the new patch. It's not only the fort that gives experience. Now Blizzard changed it. It's the fort and the towers. The experience is divided. It's the same amount of experience, but it's divided between the two of them. So uh, that's kind of important since you can now also take the towers real fast and get a bit ahead of your opponent. Looking at the talents now that we are at level 7, we have Vala playing a complete build focusing on multi shot. We have the double and Venom with one on the Bright Wing and one on the Arthurs. Double Bribe for the fly in and the bribes there that we can use as well. Stitches with the slam build. Abathur goes more and more for a build that is focused on stab damage than anything else. Up here, the cap is stolen actually. Or is it? They're moving in right now and yes, they take it. So AAA takes the cap. The next curse is going to be up in just a bit, in 8 seconds going to be there. And apparently, and faculty is not going to go for it. Like, not at all. So while this curse is going to be taken uncontested, let us take another look at the Abathur build. We have here the Barbed Spines, and where you would usually see the Mule, we have the increased range on the Symbiote Step. So it's a different style of Abathur that we are seeing from Sypho here. Not going for that pushing strategy with the Mule as a heal up anymore, but instead just like saying, okay, what I need to do here is just like support my teammates and trying to just like always jump into them and do damage with the spike. So more of a DPS Abathur than anything else, at least for now. At the 16, we would still expect to see the Triple Locust, but yeah, let's just wait for that. So, Holo on the, the Rainer, we haven't really looked too deeply on this build, but we're gonna do that in also just a bit. Level 10 nearly for AAA. Oh, 
Exxon is getting blocked. Jesus, Sky High is missing like nearly every single Howling Blast today. It's like I'm playing Arthas. That's roughly the same style. Um, to be fair to him, he always puts the uh, Howling Blast there if Stitches tries to run away. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Sorry, Falsa, but that was definitely... That was... Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> he tried to catch both and at the end he didn't get a single one of them. So yeah, let's talk about this a bit. A bit. I was like making a, a bit of fun of Sky High with the Arthas here and saying that he misses every single Howling Blast. That's certainly true, he didn't hit them, but he always put the Howling Blast in the path of the hero that was trying to escape. So the hero that escapes has two options. Either he runs the straight way and then runs into the Howling Blast and gets dropped, or he dodges the Howling Blast and then, then finds himself in a really bad spot um, as well. So. Jokes aside, good job by the Arthurs here, always zoning the opponent out. The combo that we saw with the Void Prism and the False Set Ultimate didn't really work out, as you could all see in the last time. It was really well timed with the release of the Void Prism, but the problem is that False Set was moving uh, the uh, uh, ability right into the middle between the two of them, and they just walked to the left and the right, and he didn't anything there. They are still doing a great job and were able to get one kill. They are ahead, they take the uh, bottom the boss, the top one that goes to opponent, uh, the opponent towards the faculty, but yeah, the combo potential is of course there as we already saw. It might have not worked in the last battle, but the idea between the Zeratul and the false that which was the first pick for Meteor May, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, AAA, is of course like an obvious one. You trap two or three heroes, the false set gets the setup and the channeling time on his heroic ability and that false set releases in the last second and the entire damage is ditched out. You need really good communication with this, you need to be able to talk to your teammate to make sure that that works and that you have those two seconds down cool and uh, down, down cold and then you can go for that. But yeah, it's something that we're going to see. So for now, we have still um, the next tribute spawning, and with two tributes already in the hands of AAA, that means that AAA has a chance to put a curse on a faculty, and, and faculty should probably try and contest that. The boss is still pushing for both teams, but this one is going to go down mm -hmm. very soon. Oh! Early kill against Stitches. Wow! I didn't expect it to be down that fast. I wasn't even there to witness that. But I can witness the curse because, well, the only thing that can happen right now is in fact that he's moving back. You cannot engage with the 4 versus 5 in two situations. Yeah. This, this just doesn't work out. So we have the teams now move in, and with teams I mean AA, they are starting to take the towers here, and that is going to give them a massive lead experience. They're not only wrecking the towers to get the XP for that, they're also going straight at the 4 tier. With them having the 13 talent and being a 4 versus 5, uh, it's actually a 5 versus 5, but Stitch isn't there yet. I don't think that the faculty can do too much there, but actually they push them back. They have the double Raider, and they push them back with that, and it looks like, yeah, at least for now, AA is going to be happy with this. They just move back, start to move to the top, and are probably going to take the towers up there. Yeah. Now we have them. Taking the towers now, trying to get the experience with those. And are they really going to try and contest that? It looks like they want to move in and flank them in the back. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what a great took, but that heroic ability, that gives them a bit of time to put pressure on green out. It didn't do too much at the end of the day, though, but get up to me with a nice train of vengeance, and they drop the stitches again. And the champ, and oh, Vala gets taken out as well. Stitches is actually the only one that dropped. Chen is still alive for some reason. Wow, Sky High barely surviving there. Chen is trying to get a kill on Darrow. He doesn't jump in, but oh my god, was that close. First kill here for the faculty. And I have to admit that with a little bit of luck, they would have, or would have, could have, should have been able to drop more than only one hero, maybe even three here. Level 14 versus 14, and this game is not as close as you might have uh, as you might have thought. So, let's look a little bit at the abilities. Riding on the rewind, rewind also for the force set. There were changes to the rewind, I talked about them earlier, but I want to point that out again. Rewind now, as you can see here, activate to reset the cooldown of your basic abilities. So it completely resets the cooldown right now. Only, of course, of the basic abilities, not the heroic ability. But before that, before the patch, it was only 10 seconds that it reduced the cooldown. 10 seconds flat. Now it's the incomplete reduction. That means, for example, that a Brightwing can just simply double Polymorph. He can Polymorph one, he can use the Rewind, and can Polymorph again, which makes him extremely strong in those fights, since he can just disable heroes quite easily. 
Well, we have heroes just roaming the map. Let's take a quick look at the DPS for now. Apatha is taking top DPS currently with 13,950. Von Siak in a close second, but you can really see that how uh, the Apatha is doing quite a bit of, of damage with this. We have another attempt for maybe a Void Prism. Yes, Siak is just waiting, and there it is. Catches two. There's a third one moving in, and the release only hits one hero. But I love how Darrow is always there with a quick move on the Reign of Vengeance, but Oh my god, the Zeratul is down, the Stitches died as well, but he got healed before that with a nice, nice ancestral healing. That worked really well. Now the Brightwing is down too, and look at Vala just running! Oh, the full step! Ho ho ho! Woohoohoo! Though she gets away, she actually gets away, only the bird dies. He killed the bird, but Vala is still there. And faculty is starting to gain a lot of momentum here. They have the faster 16, 8 kills against 4 against them. And they also suffer the curse, but they are still in the run for this game and they are getting the experience lead. They got really good kills in the last fight. The problem with the Void Prism really was that the heroes were too split. Faller stunt didn't get a, get a good setup for his own heroic ability. Vala was trying to move in for the double stun with the Reign of Vengeance. And they were at least able to drop one. But still, that ancestral healing might not have like might not have helped the stitches to survive. But he got a lot more tankier because of that. They had to drop that amount of HP again, and that is huge. I'm not sure if they can really take the golem there. I don't think they want to. I think they are more trying to just like bait that out, but Red it was already discovered, so I don't think that's happening. They were able to kill another fort at the bottom though. And it's only level 17 for them. Killing all those forts makes a huge difference for them right now. And getting those kills later on with the underground bonus that we have is another big, big plus in their favor. One more tower goes down, another 400 experience for them, and they move up to the top. 16 versus 17, the hook, and there we go, moves in immediately, nice, two are being caught in there, the Chen, the only one that's left out, nice, shocking, oh, this is more like it, and this time they drop the stitches as well, look at that DPS with that Vala Reign of Vengeance, this is the setup that they were going for, and this time they get it perfectly, they isolate three heroes, they drop the fourth, and then they use the Reign of Vengeance to just like carry that on into the next phase and drop a bit more. Really well done by AA. Great move by them there. They are getting this of course. And look who's out on the map suddenly. Look who came out of his closet. It's actually Abatha. He has a coming out party here. He finally he finally was brave enough to tell his parents that he's gay. And also that he has triple locusts that he just wants to spawn everywhere on in the world. And there they are. Aren't they cute? Moving in. Starting to push that in. Oh, and he moves back in the last sec. So, so much for that. The parents were proud of them. I'm proud of him as well. So, Abatha, good job on you. Uh, take that courage and carry it into the late game. Level 17 versus 17. And yeah, we have Green out and Lotus now jumping in with Exxon to drop that boss. But of course, that allows also AA to take another boss down here, which has been spotted by the far side from uh, the Rega. So, they saw that already. And uh, goodbye, boss. The entire momentum on the map shifted towards AAA again, but they are behind in experience. They have a chance to drop the fort though. And that might actually, I don't think that's going to bring them back into level 18, but they, s they still have the momentum going for them. It's actually kind of funny how that works, considering that we have currently four forts for both teams, and we see level 11, like 11 kills versus 4, but the team with 4 kills is ahead in experience by quite a bit, by nearly half a level. That is kind of insane, and that just shows how strong this underdog bonus actually is. So that's something to consider here. The momentum is still in favor of Team AAA. They're going to grab another tribute there after they take down the fort in the mid lane. And there's very little the faculty can do about that, but they don't have to do anything about it just because this is tribute number two for AAA and not number three. They are trying to move in though. They, wanna, they want to get the curse. They want to go for... No, they actually move back. Did they move back? Did they move in? Are they really trying? Ah, there we go, the jump in, and Chen is pretty much alone. What was Chen thinking? 
There comes Lotus with a split, but look at that quick Void Prism. Siak again with a good one. This time he doesn't really catch anybody, but there is that Rain of Vengeance. And oh wow, that was close. Nearly killed one of them, but suddenly Siak and Brightwing are in trouble, and both of them die. Wow! And faculty, like holy mother of God. How did they get that? They dropped the Arthurs as well. They are just so tanky. That's the difference in lineups that we have there, ladies and gentlemen. We are currently looking at a double tank comp against a single tank comp, and oh my god, Reyna took down the Vala as well. It was actually Cypher, the heroic ability, on the clone. Really well done. I mean, that is... That's actually like pretty awesome for them. But it just shows the difference in style that's the styles that we have there. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. I don't think we really mentioned it afterwards too much. This is just like if you have double tank comp, of course, you can withstand a lot more damage. Your opponent's team is dishing out that damage a lot faster. So the idea is to drop you so fast that you can't do anything and turn things around. But when that ancestral healing hits and uh, the rest of the team stays alive because of their talents, talents like, for example, let's say the... Uh, uh, like something like stone skin, which you actually don't see for in faculty, uh, then it's going to become extremely difficult to uh, really do anything about it. Like, you can't kill a hero, suddenly it snowballs, one of the DPS heroes is under pressure, he needs to move back, that means he cannot attack any longer, you will miss out on the DPS from him and it starts to snowball, which is exactly what we saw in that last fight. So that's something to really keep in mind when we see those battles. They depend a lot on a proper setup, which they kind of got, but it just wasn't enough damage to really drop those heroes that they wanted to drop. Especially the Abathar can help out with this shield here. Talking about the Abathar, let's look at the hero damage again. Abathar is still on number 2 with 29,000. And he still has 114,000 siege damage. So even though he got changed, he's still extremely strong. So Abathar currently with another coming out party down to the bottom. Moved out of his own base and is dropping the triple locust again. There we go. In the mid lane we have the move with the Void Prism again. They all move in. That allows the setup for the false stat. And there we go. Stitches is just always taking the damage. This time he gets dropped and Lotus for the triple panda. I... Um, Chen is crazy with that triple panda. Just look how he starts chasing down the heroes. Zeratul is already gone. And especially Reyna is just such a DPS hero. He Olo gets locked down on the other hand and gets dropped here. It's a one for one. The panda moves away. Levels 19 versus 21. And we want to have with that fort down here eliminated. With the fort at the top eliminated. Also have another look at the talent. Let's look at the Reyna. Reyna is one of the DPS heroes that they have there. They actually take after the giant killer Bullseye. That's another good build for him because it's that extra stun and the 50% more damage for a second. Berserk is extremely strong as well. That's the one they choose. Double resurgence still. Three minute cooldown now, now on it in the newest patch instead of like two. Another Bolt of the Storm, so another Blink for Zeratul. We have the Blast of Awe. Up here we see the resurgence of the Storm. The Vala is most likely going to pick the uh, additional talent for Reign of Vengeance. Could pick the Blink, which is most likely the reason why Vala didn't pick it yet. Because if in the next fight, if she suddenly realizes, well, I'm getting ganked here, she's gonna Blink away. And pick that real quick with the hotkey. But, well, like, skilling it with a hotkey and then blinking away, of course, duh, also with a hotkey. But the idea is just, like, to pick that a bit later. Yeah, you see, she still didn't pick it. That's not because she forgot about it, it's just because it's a situational thing. If she needs it in the fight, she'll use it for the, uh, uh, for the Reign of Vengeance. If, on the other hand, she gets suddenly, like, flanked, she's gonna quick skill the, uh, uh, blink and blink away. Tribute is coming in. And so far, we have the 20 versus 20. We have also another Night Camp pushing the middle. That is something uh, that uh, AA has to react to. I'm actually like impressed that in faculty he was able to bring this back. At the beginning of the, f the, the battle it didn't really look good for them. They lost a lot in this match. 14 kills versus 10 still. But it's the important kills that in faculty got. And they also took down those keeps. So now suddenly they get another boss. And with the boss they should be able to get the other boss down at the bottom too. Because the top lane doesn't, help, doesn't hold the fort anymore. And nor does it keep. So the entire lane is open. Falstead, uh, and somebody could get that tribute. It looks like Falstead is going to get it. There's no way for Infaculty to contest that right now. But they don't really have to. AAA can just move back after this. And we already have Cypher pushing the top lane with the Abathur. And with that boss pushing, this core is under so much pressure that it might crack. Especially if another camp, the Siege Giants, are also going to push that in. So that's going to become extremely annoying. 
the triple assassin com will somehow have to deal with that and I feel especially Sky High at the front line has to uh, do something about it. I guess a lot comes down to how Darrow is going to be able to use his polymorph. If he's, if he's quick on that, the Chen is just like their biggest obstacle right now. Every time you think you drop him, he suddenly goes into triple panda mode and hunts your own assassins. You can see how the new shields work by the way. Like Even though the golem was going absolutely nuts on the core, it still has shields left at level 20. It has quite a lot of those. But we still have another keep taken, so now not a single keep survives for AAA. We're 20 minutes in, and we see in faculty just take another boss. Going straight for that. Moving in. Oh, the hook! The hook against Sky High. The boss isn't taken yet, though. Sky High being attacked. Look at that rain of vengeance. It gets four times the start! But they don't drop Lotus. That was a big mistake here by AAA. They screwed that up here. Here comes the uh, Mala is already down, and there goes. Yep, there goes the Brightwing. That was a misplay that we saw there from uh, AAA. At the beginning, they didn't want to initiate here. They lose the Arthurs too. They initiated before because the Arthurs was hooked. But then we had four times the stun right here with the Reign of Vengeance, and here was the Panda. He was stunned four times, and they could have bursted him down to prevent the ultimate, and they didn't do it. It wasn't a good call. Like I think nobody called him. Maybe they thought he would die. As it happens, he did. If they take the panda out, they might be able to like take the turns around. They have one hero down, one of the tanks is gone, and then they can go for it. But as it happens, they wasted that opportunity. They didn't see it. Maybe now it is in faculty going for victory, claiming the throne at the HCL best of one on Cursed Hollow. And faculty takes it against AAA and wins this match today. Their second match in the HCL. Congratulations. PPP is going up against Alternate here at the HCL. It's the second play day. We have to the left side of our best of one map, Dragonshire. PPP with Luvi on the Rhaegar. Pain on the Zeratul. Always a force to be reckoned with. Gela playing the Arthurs today. Bakery with the Tychus. And Vipolino on the Chen. To the right side of the map, we have Mopsio. Whoa, for Alternate with the Stitchers. Always Battle dangerous to give him the Stitchers. Vala seconds. being played by Gluehammer. Gucci on the Falstad. Vasil on the Carry Gen. And Krolu playing Three, the Brightwing. Two, the bands today in this one. game were Uther and Abatha. So the two heroes with the TH. And yeah, I'm extremely interested to see how especially Payne is going to do on the Zeratul and Mopsy on the Stitches. Like, Payne's Zeratul is so damn good that some people just basically like ban the Zeratul against PPP because they say like, hey dude, I don't want to deal with this. This is like way too much for me. This is just brutal. Get that guy just out of the way. On the other hand, same has been said of Mopsio on his stitches, like his hooks are out of this world somehow. Like a few people have already been saying that they think that the hook of Mopsio's stitches has some magnetic hooks in it and actually hits target. It's like a heat seeker missile hook, something like that. Right now we're jumping in here once again, ooh, at the bottom lane already, and there is like heavy battling going on with four heroes at times jumping in for alternate, not too much happening just there. At the top, the Chen and the Stitches going up against each other, both of them like insulting the other guy, you are fat, no, you are fatter, you drink well, you eat too much, and both of them just like realizing after running around each other for like half an hour that they both need cardio because they're just not fit enough. So the Chen against the Stitches, there's not too much happening up there, but down here we have Guccio jumping back just in the last second, being it back. Oh, and the kill against Zeratul, wow. Oh. Okay, do you know, by the way, why the hotkey for the Hearthstone when you like TP back to base is B? Because it's the bitch out button. If you like press it, you are like bitching out of the fight, and that's exactly what Guccio just did. He survived, but then he flew in and he's back to business already and trying to take down Gela. But she's moving away on the Arthurs. At the top lane, we still have Vipolino going up against Mopsio. Both shrines in the... <laughs> Look at the bat. The new Karrigan bat. God, I love it. She's already flying across the net. This is so damn awesome. I really like it. Oh, jumps in. Look at that comp. Pain. Completely hit by her. And there she goes again. Look at that. That is Carrigan right there, trying to capture that, and what's she gonna do? I love that new bat mode. Blizzard is doing such a great job at times, 
So, uh, this is actually like pretty cool. Uh, there we go again. The Countess is ready. We have so far only one kill. The kill on Pain is the only thing that really happened here. But we have Alternate starting to push in the bottle lane heavily and getting a bit of an advantage. But nice initiation with the Howling Blast. Here comes the Poison and Venom doing its job but not doing it enough. No kills just yet. And the attempt by Kerrigan to drop Gela but not able to move her in. We have suddenly... Oh, good job! Oh, good job! Goes down, grenade to the face, and down he goes. Yeah, he was flying into trouble. He did not expect Tigers to be there. He did not think Tigers would be there. And oh, the battle between Vivalino and Mopsio is apparently going in favor of the Stitches right now. Down to the bottom lane. It's once again this rotation that we've been talking about earlier. This time, they actually take the shine. But there comes Carrigan again. And Pain blinks away, gets healed. Oh my god. Like, he is having a tough time against Carrigan here. But the drop against Brightwing, really well done by PPP. Bakery was there as well. Another attempt to drop Kayla. And she escapes. Really good job, but the Dragon Knight now ends up in the hands of Alternate anyways. Alternate is doing a great job here. I feel from a tactical point of view, they are doing a bit better than what we see from uh, PvP right now. But the, the battles and uh, the coordination between the two teams is really impressive at this point. I love the rotations that we have from Alternate with the Carrigan jumping off the mid lane. And if you think about it, usually the problem that you have with that is that you lose on a, up on experience, but they are even ahead. Since they have been able to push in the tower, thanks to the Carrigan rotations, that really worked out well for them. Now even Vipolino had to move to the mid lane. Carrigan moving in again. Quick dash from Bakery saves him for now. Maybe Carrigan in trouble. Here comes the overkill against Carrigan and goodbye. Countess, she goes down at the top lane. We have the Dragonite going ham again against the wall, taking another tower maybe, but the experience is roughly the same. Three kills against one, the three kills for Team PPP. They're doing extremely well here in that regard. And another attempt by Bakery, but already blinking away. We have level 7 already reached, and that's usually the time for our talents to be shown. So, overkill build for Bakery. Stitches by Mopsio with Amplified Healing and Tenderizer, not going for this full slam build. Glue Hammer, right-click build on the Vala. For, uh, let's, let's have a look at Pain here. Block against the right-click heroes that we see for the opponent's team. Oh, Tyke is being killed here. Unfortunately, we just had the uh, uh, skill screen up. That's a problem that we still have in an alpha since Blizzard unfortunately hasn't given us an option to look at individual heroes and their builds. We always have to just like throw up the big screen on and uh, that objects uh, that basically like obstructs everything. So uh, sorry for that, but I'm pretty sure that Blizzard is gonna change that. Maybe even with a beta already would be amazing, but let's see. Level 10 earlier for alternate, level 9 currently for PPP, so they have to play it a bit more passive for now. Looking quickly at those talents again, here one in Venom, we have Gathering Power and Shadow Spike for Zara, for Zara Jewel, played by Pain here. We have builds roughly what we would expect, Rain of Vengeance is being used here, Shock and Awe, Maelstrom and Blink Heal on the side of them. Ford is down and it's nearly level 11 versus level 10 at this point. Three kills against two, but PPP is of course not done yet. Now that we have 10 for both teams, that is when things are really going to become interesting. The mid lane where Alternate rotates as 5 is the center of attention for now. They are trying to initiate here of course, and especially Pain is going to be important with his Void Prison. The Void Prisons need to be really good for that. The rotation towards the Night Camp, or towards the Bruiser Camp I should probably say, by Alternate, puts a bit more pressure onto the top lane, which will be countered by the Bruiser Camp that we see from uh, PvP to the left side. So, the rest of the team already moving in. Oh, that hook attempt against Pain, wow. Uh, there he moves already away, moves down to the bottom lane again, then the shrines are going to be active in just two seconds, and they're not only going to see the top take here the taken by alternate, back. but most likely also going to see wall and maybe even a fort go down. It's going to be an exchange, it's going to be a fort, fort versus a fort. We have down to the bottom lane, PPP breaking through, they're going for the exchange, they realize they cannot defend. They're like, yeah, we won't be there in time uh, by any means, so we have to break through and take their fort when they take ours. So it's a simple exchange, a bit faster here for alternate, and now the question is just like what are the teams going to do? Are they pushing through with this? It looks like it. They just try to push in and there has to be a TP back. They have to TP back right now and it doesn't really look like they do. They actually think they can outpush them. Ha! 
this is gonna be a base race. They think they cannot push them. Do they have the DPS? The Odin is there. They're already pushing that in. The wall is breached. The keep is being attacked. It's gonna be at least keep for keep. How far are the teams gonna push that in? How far is it gonna be? I mean, this keep goes down. Which one is down faster? Both roughly at the same time. I actually think that right now we have PPP with more pushing power. They reach the 13. They're moving in. The core. It's a race. No, they be back. They be back. They bitch out. And this is the race back here by PPP. Oh, attempting to catch them. Blue Hammer falls dead. Vipolino. The hook. No, don't get them. It can't unhorse the. Panda, by the way, think about like that poor horse. There's such a fat panda, and then has such a like, such a small horse. It's a pony. It's a pony. Like how can you do that? That's animal cruelty right there. Well, bottom shrine is now being taken, and of course, PVP realizes what's going to happen here. They already sent the panda up to the top lane, so that he's going to take the top, so we won't they won't have to deal with the dragonite. Three kills against two, and the rest of the team now starting to go down to the middle. At least Alternate is rotating towards the middle here and is looking for that uh, for that spot. We have, of course, that camp down uh, down uh, at the uh, bottom lane already eliminated. That tower is about to go down. It's one level advantage that we see for them. One level. The panda at the top, pushing the lane back a little bit, going for the deep push. We have Bakery in the mid lane, only dancing around. You have to be careful that the stitch just doesn't get the hook. He's looking for it. He is looking for that hook, and he might throw him. But no, he's not really dropping it. He's not dropping it just yet. Oh, but yeah, there we have it. And the Eats jumps for it. And goodbye. Oh, no, no, no. So far, they didn't kill anybody. Here comes the Void Prism. A good one. Kerrigan is isolated. Kerrigan is isolated. She rushes in in the last second. Well done here. But she dies regardless. The counter kill against Draeger takes the healer down, which is huge. Gela trying to survive, but she dies as well. It looks like Vala might go down too, but Kane cannot follow this up. Now we have one more hero maybe about to die. The false that is getting low, but Gucci with a barrel roll over the wall survives. And now Vipolino is in trouble and is biting the dust as well. The last nail in the coffin for the stitches here. Right, Vala moving in and dropping that right click. Now the mid lane, very much exposed. And it currently looks like we are going to see that fort maybe taken out with the Dragonite. They get one for sure. So they start to move in here. We have still one hero down for another 10 seconds. Level 15, nearly 16 versus 14. And here comes Alternate. Alternate wants that victory. They are moving in already. They won on the first match day. Are they gonna go for a 2-0 here? Are they gonna win their second match as well? They are already pushing towards the keep. Five heroes up now. Four PPP, but the 16 talent. The 16 talent on alternate and they wreck the wall. They take the tower, they go through the gate and take tower number two as well. Just increasing that experience lead that they currently have on their opponent. Five kills against four, but an entire level for them. They lost the key, but so did of course PPP. They have the Zeratul at the top, moving back down again. Their first keep is gone. Are they going to lose the second one? It looks very much like it. What is Payne going to do? And does he have his ultimate up again? He could go for it. They're trying to drop Mobsteel on the Dragonite. They don't get him just yet, though. No, here comes the Odin form. The keep is still alive. Here's another Breath of Fire taking the keep down. No, not quite. But the Odin is starting to move in, and here comes the Void Prism. Void Prism activated. Bakery moves in. Bakery trying to drop it, hitting everything that he has on the Odin. But here comes Vala with a quick move, only hitting one of the stuns. The second one dodged by Bakery. Zeratul is nearly down, and Zeratul dies. Pain is dead. And now Bakery is moving away as well. As Vasil on the Carrigan is starting to close the distance with a quick Ravage. Nope, she doesn't get it. Doesn't get the impales here up, and the keep goes down. 17 versus 15. Bakery is out, and alternate retreats. Talents, let's have a quick check. Triple, triple rewind. Four set Carrigan on Brightwing, all of them on rewind, and it shows. It really shows in the battle. Stitches with the additional stun that we see from him here. Carrigan looking for also for the increased range of the Primal Grasp here. We have him doing a great job. The Impaling Blade Radius is currently also increased. What we see though is Relentless on the Arthurs and also on the Chen, and that helps them a lot with the stun from the Stitches, with the stun from the Carrigan, with the pulling off from the Brightwing. That really helps a lot with those abilities to keep them in the game, to just make them not as useless when those um, crowd control spells really hit. So for now, we have still six kills versus four. Not really such a big deal. The 
problem is just like how strategically we see the moves from alternate dropping one keep after another and they are able to catch those Dragonites really well. They already caught two of them. Uh, two key, uh, actually did they catch two or three Dragonites? I don't even know. But like they caught enough to really pressure down a second key too. Um, I once again want to apologize for my voice. I realize that it's currently failing quite a bit. I'm still sick, which you can probably hear. So yeah, sorry for that. I hope that it's still okay and bearable. But right now, yeah. <laughs> I love that Carrigan bat, by the way. Batman would be proud. Batman would definitely be, be proud. It's a bit like the Count, I think. It's like, this, this is pretty cool. But regardless, we have down to the bottom lane now that push coming in. And that's the last lane with the keep. We also see now the Dragonite being ready again. Uh oh, Stitches. Gets the hook against the Chen. Holy cow! Vipolino jumps in. The rest of the team is already there. Triple Panda action. Oh, nice, nice. That Void Prison. Carrigan goes down. Holy shit, pain. That was beautiful. Gela lives, got those Y and how, but that was so well done, but it might not be enough. Alternate is doing well, they kill the Rhaegar, and here comes finally that shock and awe again as Vipolino goes down as well. They drop Gela and they are gonna drop Bakery too. They are gonna kill all four of them. Only Pain survives. That Void Prison by his was amazing. Not only interrupting the shock and awe of the fall set, but also putting Alternate in a really awkward spot. They lost the carry again, but then they were just able to turn that around and it was it was brutal like very well done here Krolo of course with his polymorph even with a relentless on all those heroes that rewind just works so well for him now we have that attempt to take the core they have roughly 10 seconds until the Chen is bad Rhaegar and only two look at those shields they are amazing but we have four siege shines down here and then core is dropping hit points like Paris Hilton, her panties. Down goes the core and Krolu. Well, actually, no, it is over. GG alternate wins the game. Congratulations to them. Their second victory in the second game at the HCL. Victorious against PPP. Congratulations.